Hi and welcome to another CSEC physics tutorial video. This video is going to cover a worked example of kinetic and potential energy. The question that we're going to do is on the screen and it says a 10 kilogram stone is dropped from a height of 5 meters. What speed will it have as it strikes the ground? Right? So we have a case where a 10 kilogram stone five meters above the ground is dropped, allowed to travel that distance of five meters. We're asked to find what the velocity or speed of the object is as it strikes the ground, or conversely, just before it strikes the ground. So this question is testing the principle of the conservation of energy. Right. Conservation of energy, in this case conservation of mechanical energy. The principle of cons conservation of energy states that energy can either be created or destroyed during a reaction, during a process, or an encounter, but the total amount of energy remains constant. However, this energy can be converted between different forms. So the energy before the stone is dropped will be equal to the energy after the stone is dropped. In other words, the stone doesn't lose any energy. What happens is that this energy is converted from potential energy, which it had before it was allowed to fall, into kinetic energy, which it has just before it strikes the ground. So before being dropped, the stone had potential energy because of its location in a gravitational field. We're assuming this is the Earth's gravitational field. As it's about to strike the ground, it has kinetic energy because it's now moving with a velocity, v. The general formula for gravitational potential energy, EP, is mgh, where m is equal to the mass of the object. g is the gravitational acceleration because of the Earth's gravitational field and H is the height of the object above our reference location which is usually ground. So we know that the potential energy is mgh and kinetic energy is given by the general formula Ek is equal to half m, m where m is the mass of the object. Okay. Ek is equal to a half m, where m is the mass of the object, times v squared, where v is the velocity or the speed of the object. Yeah. So this is what we're trying to find. All right, first up, notice that the term m, the mass of the object, appears twice. It occurs on both sides of the equation. So we can cancel m. And we're left with gh is equal to half v squared, or 2gh is equal to v squared. This implies that v is equal to the square root of 2 times g times h. Right? We know that the height involved, h is 5 meters, and the value of g that we commonly work with is that g is equal to 10 meters per second squared. So V will be equal to 2 times 10 meters per second squared times 5 meters, or the square root of 100 meters squared per second squared. Right? And so you notice when you take the square root of this, 
you get a value of 10 meters per second. Sorry, 10 meters per second. And that's our final answer. So notice the velocity of the stone as it hit the ground did not depend on the mass of the stone but only on the height of the object, or the stone in this case, above the surface of the ground. This is actually a major point in Newton's theory of motion, as opposed to the earlier theory of motion supported by Aristotle. It points out, or it realizes, that all objects fall at the same speed determined by g, as long as no other net forces act. And the final speed of these objects is determined only by their height above the ground. So in other words, a stone and a feather would both fall at the same speed and would both reach a velocity of 10 meters per second if dropped through a distance of 5 meters, as long as no other forces were acting on them. Now, of course, in reality, the feather feels the effect of air resistance much more than the stone does which is why a feather appears to fall slower. However, without air, in the, in the absence of air resistance, then they would actually both fall at the same speed. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, please feel free to leave us a comment in the comment section or share the video to others if you think it will help them. All right, please also stay tuned until the next video. Thanks for watching.